As for grief, you'll find it comes in waves. When the ship is first wrecked, you are drowning with wreckage all around you. Everything floating around you reminds you of the beauty and the magnificence of the ship that was and is no more. And all you can do is float. You find some piece of the wreckage and you hang on for a while. Maybe it's some physical thing. Maybe it's a happy memory or a photograph. Maybe it's a person who is also floating. For a while, all you can do is float, stay alive. In the beginning, the waves are a hundred feet tall and crash over you without mercy. They come 10 seconds apart and don't even give you the time to catch your breath. All you can do is hang on and float. After a while, maybe weeks, maybe months, you find the waves are still a hundred feet tall, but they come further apart. When they come, they still crash all over you and wipe you out. But in between, you can breathe, you can function. You never know what's going to trigger the grief. It might be a song, a picture, a street intersection, the smell of a cup of coffee. It can be just about anything. And when the waves come crashing, but in between waves, there is life. Somewhere down the line, and it's different for everybody, you find that the waves are only 80 feet tall, or 50 feet tall. And while they still come, they come further apart. You can see them coming. An anniversary, a birthday, or Christmas, or a landing at O'Hare. You can still see it coming, for the most part, and prepare yourself. And when it washes over you, you know that somehow you will, again, come out the other side. Soaking wet, spluttering, still hanging on to some tiny piece of the wreckage. But you'll come out. Take it from an old guy. The waves never stop coming. And somehow you really don't want them to. But you'll learn that you'll survive them. And other waves will come. And you'll survive them too. If you are lucky, you'll have lots of scars from lots of loves and lots of shipwrecks.